Google's Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro got their first official unveiling this week, promising a load of new features that I cannot wait to get my hands on. Here then are the main reasons why I'm excited about Google's next phone and why you should be too. As a professional photographer, I'm of course most excited about any camera innovations that allow you to get brilliant looking photos without having to haul masses of gear halfway up a hillside. Our Google's Pixel phones have always had pretty decent cameras that let you take great HDR and low light shots, but the last few phones haven't really pushed the boat out. The Pixel 5's dual camera system did take some really, really great photos, but up against the triple camera array of the Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max or the amazing zoom skills of the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Pixel 5 didn't really do a lot to tempt people like me who are looking for the best in photography. The Pixel 6 could well be an improvement with an upgraded image sensor that promises to be able to capture up to 150% more light. And capturing more light means producing better looking photos, particularly in those low light situations. There's also going to be a four times optical zoom lens. Now I'm pretty jazzed about that because I love using those zoom lenses to find those more interesting, more creative compositions that you might have missed if you just use a wide angle lens. It is only the Pixel 6 Pro that is destined to get that four times optical zoom though, with the standard Pixel 6 having a regular zoom lens and an ultra wide lens as well. Google's own custom-made Tensor processor also promises some booster photography as well, in particular booster computational photography, things like HDR and also getting sharper images even when there's a lot of movement in the scene. All in all, the Pixel 6 sounds like it might have a cracking camera, but it is going to need to because it's got some stiff competition, in particular the iPhone 13, which we are hoping is going to be launched sometime in September, so before the Pixel 6, and we are expecting big things from the iPhone 13's camera as well. Previously, Google has used Qualcomm Snapdragon chips for all of its Pixel phones, but for this one, it's gone in a new direction, creating its own custom processor that it's calling Tensor. Now, Google hasn't been exactly specific about what kind of performance upgrades we might see from its own chip, but it has said that we can expect to see some boosts to things like AI and speech recognition, alongside the photography upgrades that I've already mentioned. It might seem a bit of an odd move for Google to start wanting to make its own silicon, but it is a move that I think is particularly exciting for the future of the Pixel line. The Tensor chip isn't just about raw power. Most smartphones already have way more power than they actually need, but by controlling both the hardware and the software, Google can create applications that really take advantage of all of that hardware on board. Hopefully it could also extend the lifespan of its products by being able to provide software updates and security patches for much longer. It's much the same as what Apple has done for some time, controlling both the hardware and the software and thus having complete control about how those two things interact. It's one of the reasons why Apple's phones tend to age better with even five year old phones being able to run the latest version of iOS. It's also why Apple did a similar thing with its Mac line, launching its own M1 processor for all of its computers. The Pixel 6 will be among the first phones to officially launch running Android 12. Now we've been using Android 12 for a little while in its beta form, and there are plenty of little tricks and neat changes that we've already really enjoyed using and that we're excited to see on the Pixel 6. The Material U design language looks great. We particularly like the trick where you can create entire themes for your phone based around the image that you set as the wallpaper. Android will look at that image that you've set and it will pick out the dominant colors in there and use those colors to change the look of your icons, your notifications panel, the settings menu, everything across your interface to give the whole thing a really nice cohesive look. Now I love customizing the look of my phone, so I am really keen to see how this works on the Pixel 6, particularly using some of my own photography. Android 12 also makes a variety of tweaks to your privacy settings, including giving you the option to turn off complete system access to your cameras and your microphones, just in case you're a little bit paranoid about apps listening in when you don't want them to. There are a whole load of tweaks in Android 12. Not all of them are groundbreaking, but all of which do add up to being a really nice looking interface that we are really excited to try out on the Pixel 6 Pro's whopping 6.7 inch display. 
But what do you think of the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro? Are you excited about these phones or are your eyes firmly set on the Apple iPhone 13? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to keep it CNET for a lot more.